Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in today's one we are playing Cyberpunk 2077 on the AMD Radeon RX 6300. This is a modern GPU launched in 2023 and despite this it has just 2 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. It does support ray tracing which you might find surprising and will certainly be testing it though it's not going to go well. The card runs in PCIe X4 4.0 mode with the i9 system System. and yeah the i9-4900K is definitely an overkill pairing but um, it won't be utilised that much during today's gameplay test so let's get into it and see how it runs this game. Now the truth is I'm using the i9-4900K because I was testing it as part of another video so it's still in the system. The thing is you could pair the RX 6300 with any CPU and the graphics card is still going to be the limiting factor to be fair so CPU is sort of irrelevant in this case but uh, let's start with what you probably expected that's 1080p with the low settings here absolute lowest across the board everything turned down or off uh, the field of view remains at 90 which is a bit higher than default but that's my preferred way to play so let's load up a save game and see if the 2 gig RX 6300 can handle Cyberpunk 2077 Alright, so here we are. We are at 1080p with the lowest settings. Native resolution here. We don't have any form of upscaling enabled. No FSR, XESS, anything like that. And well, we are getting uh, almost 30 FPS here. Um, I think the average is probably just going to come out at slightly above 30 FPS, but I will have the on screen stats on the screen, of course. <laughs> that made no sense. 31 FPS though, right now. 30 I'd say we're good for 30 FPS with this card this card is pretty hard to find on sites like eBay and that it doesn't pop up very often if it does then it's more than likely to be part of a pre-built I'm gonna hop out the car here as you can see this does improve the frame rate a little bit let's just um, wipe out a couple of pedestrians see how this affects things yeah I mean 30 FPS is doable here with the RX 6300 2 gig. The VRAM has pretty much been maxed out and fully utilized as expected. Let's see if we can bump up this frame rate a little bit with the help of FSR. So what I'm going to do, I don't want to make the game completely horrible looking. So I think I'm going to go with balanced. There we are. The thing is with an RX 6300, it's going to be difficult to achieve 60 FPS unless you really decimate the graphics. I'm probably talking like 900p with uh, FSR enabled as well. So I, I think aiming for at least 30 FPS consistently is a nice place to be. Here then with FSR 2.1 and set to balance, look we're getting between 40 and 50 FPS most of the time now the game doesn't look too bad for it let's just take control of this vehicle excuse me madam here we are right so yeah the frame rate's going to drop a bit when we're inside a car i like this paintwork gold reflective very nice there are still going to be some moments of slowdown as you can see we saw frame dips into the high 30s there but once again the exact figures will be up on screen controls feel a bit odd i'm not sure why but there feels to be uh, some sort of like delay at times with the controls maybe that's the variation in frame rate I'm not sure but overall it doesn't feel whoa sorry reverse I didn't mean to do that let's just uh, get out of the vehicle and uh, is he on to me oh, oh my goodness yep right let's run away run away so I'd suggest basically 1080p as a base resolution and then playing about with FSR if you're using a card like this as I said this is a modern card it's just a very weak one so not going to be ideal for modern AAA titles but with a few sacrifices it can handle it now then let's see if we can enable ray tracing and what we need to do to the visuals in order to hit at least 30 FPS with ray traced effects on so to start with I've maintained FSR 2.1 with the balanced preset but I've also enabled all the ray tracing options and gone with medium lighting. Ultra or Psycho is absolutely just going to decimate things as if ray tracing enabled isn't going to be bad enough anyway. But everything else remains at low. Let's jump back into the game and see. Has it jammed? Oh no. Okay. Right. 6 FPS. The water looks pretty decent. 
I'll admit, but uh, 6 FPS is not ideal. No need for an on-screen benchmark result here, I think you'll agree. I mean, it does look better. Ray tracing is certainly still noticeable, even with that medium lighting preset. But there must be a way we can make this playable, right? Well, let's jump back into the settings and find out. I just want to comment on the GPU power, though. It's using less than 25 watts, this graphics card, which is very impressive if you're looking for a very low power solution and something low profile to add to that. But yeah, ray tracing is doable, but it's not going to be pleasant. Let's see if we can get at least 30 FPS somehow, whatever it takes. All right, so this time I've gone with FSR 2.1, again, with ultra performance. So this is basically the most aggressive form of FSR. All the ray tracing options are turned on because we want to try and notice it, though that may be irrelevant if we're staring through about 16 pixels on screen. Let's get back into it then, enable the frame rate overlay. All right, so we're doing a bit better. 14 FPS, well, 13 FPS. Sounding a bit generous there, 14, there we go. If we look up at the sky, we're getting nearly 20 FPS, but I mean, no one can really expect to have to play the game like this. It's going to be pretty difficult to see what we're doing. Maybe looking at the floor is going to get us a high frame rate. Uh, no, it's about the same. Pretty awful, but uh, I know where this is going. We're going to have to turn that resolution down. I mean, <laughs> we're already running at FSR 2.1 Ultra Performance, so things are looking pretty blurry, but they're about to get a whole lot worse. Okay, so what I've done now is drop things to 720p. We're going to stick with FSR 2.1 and the Ultra Performance FSR mode here. Uh, ray tracing still enabled with medium lighting and everything else reduced to low. Surely this is enough for 30 FPS, right? And there we go. 31, 32 FPS. We'll start the benchmark. The water looks great. I mean, there's about 64 pixels worth down there. But look at this, we can see lighting effects in the cars, sort of, it, it's pretty horrific. Um, it looks like I'm playing on an old 90s TV, <laughs> not, not the good kind either, not a good CRT uh, television, but a knackered old thing that reminds me of what we used to have at my parents' house that was slowly dying. Yeah, the, the sort of, the shimmering effects caused by the FSR preset as well as the ray traced reflections just makes things look really weird i mean this car i'm not sure if there's some sort of paint job on it that's supposed to make it look like that but it looks pretty horrible it's all blocky let's actually take this one sorry madam um we'll go for a little drive here i mean yeah the, the ray traced effects are certainly <laughs> noticeable this is looking horrible the frame rate now has dropped quite significantly to the low 20s. I am still surprised that this two gigabyte graphics card is handling the game, despite the low frame rate. I mean, we've run out of VRAM. We ran out of VRAM the second I launched this title, to be fair. It is quite difficult to play and enjoy games, whoops, in 2024 with just two gigs of VRAM, even though the card is a modern one, and as you would expect, supports the latest drivers. Now, when you go on the AMD website to install those drivers, you can't search RX 6300, you have to search RX 6400 and install those drivers instead, but it will pick the card up, uh, so that's good. The frame rate now is below 20 FPS. I can just about see what I'm doing in terms of driving. I mean, I can see the traffic. You wouldn't think so by the way I'm driving. I'm crashing into everything. But yeah, I mean, Cyberpunk is not looking its best. I am glad developers include options like this so that you can absolutely destroy your visuals for the sake of um, a higher frame rate. It's always welcome. Would I recommend playing like this? Probably not, but I'm certainly having fun aside from the massive headache uh, caused by the pixels on screen but there we go i'm actually going to switch locations and see if things are improved outside of night city too okay so if like me you like to explore the badlands a little more you're a bit of a nomad you like to explore outside of the city how have i hit that it's like the only thing within miles i could have possibly driven into uh then anyway yeah i mean the frame rate's going to be a lot better we're still using 720p as a base resolution with FSR 2.1 set to ultra performance. So we're probably upscaling from like 240p here. But I mean, yeah, it, uh, it doesn't look as bad as it could. I think it's probably going to look a little better 
um, on YouTube than it does in real life. Do you remember watching my 72p video when I ran the game uh, using some I and I tweaks at 72p resolution? I mean, that was truly horrible. This certainly doesn't look as bad as that, but there are some really jagged edges around like palm trees and other street furniture, I guess you could say, um, that really lets you know you have an aggressive form of FSR. That sums it up, broken. In fact, look, we'll just, we'll use that as a thumbnail. That's perfect, broken, yeah. <laughs> Both my eyeballs and the game itself, I think that's referring to. And on that note, well, I think we'll leave it there. The RX 6300 versus Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing. A horrible experience as expected, but perhaps a little surprising as well that this two gigabyte card could actually manage it. So thanks, and I'll see you next time.